Good morning, Meeting House Church. How's everyone doing this morning? Oh, okay, okay. We need to try that again. All right? It's a Sunday morning. It's not early. It's 10 o'clock. Most of us have been up for a couple hours now, all right? So let's try this again. How's everyone doing this morning? There we go. I love it. I love it. Well, good morning. My name is Bobby Dalsing, and I am the youth pastor here at Meeting House Church, and I just want to say thank you for joining us this morning. If you're new here, or if you're a regular and you just have a prayer request, we have a connection card in the seat back pocket right in front of you. Just fill that out with as much information as you feel comfortable with, and then just stick it in the offering plate as it goes by at the end of the service. Before we get started this morning, I just want to direct your attention to our What's Happening sheet. So if you're new here, and you're going to get this every week, and this is going to provide you with things that are happening here at Meeting House Church in the next month or even a little bit longer. So I just want to direct your attention to some of these things. The first one is this. Next Sunday, there is going to be a guest services meeting immediately after the church. So if you're a connector or a greeter, we ask you to come to that. Lunch will be provided, so please make sure to stay after the service for that for a little bit. You're going to meet the new uh, greeters who signed up from our ministry fair. You're going to meet the new leaders, so make sure to come to that. And the next is this. On October 27th to the 29th is our men's retreat. So if you have not registered for that and you want to, please go to meetinghousechurch.com slash events, and you can just register and pay right there, okay? Let's go ahead and pray this morning as we continue with our service. Dear Heavenly Father, God, just thank you for the day that you've given to us today. God, we are here because you've allowed it. God, we woke up this morning because you allowed us to wake up, so thank you for that. So God, this morning, I just ask that no matter what is going on in our lives, God, we're just able to focus on you. Because God, you deserve all glory and honor and praise because we have everything because you gave it to us. So, Lord, right now I just want to ask everybody just to lift up their voices and praise to you, God, as we sing these songs and as we prepare our hearts and our minds for what you have laid on Pastor James's heart this morning, God. And just help us to grow that much further in our own personal walk with you. In your son's holy name, amen. Amen. The bridge of the song that we're, that we're going to sing first this morning says, And what a love we found, death can't hold us down. We shout it out because we're, we're alive because you're alive. So we're going to sing this, this song to this, our Savior this morning. Let's praise him together. There were walls between us. shaking. Sing it out, church. Feel the darkness shaking. All the dead are coming back to life. Back to life. Hear the song awaken. All creation singing. We're alive. Cause you're Stronger, your love awakens, awakens. 
is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Water turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There is no one like you. We'll sing this to our Savior this morning. Water turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Go into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. None like you. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God. Our God, sing it again. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God. Our God. darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you our God is greater our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than any other our God is healer awesome and powerful Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is greater, awesome in power, our God, our God. for us, who can ever stop us, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us, and if our God is with us, then what could stand against, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us, and if our God is with us, then what could stand against. What could stand against? Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome and powerful. stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. And if our God is for us, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is 
is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? is greater our God is stronger God will go higher than any other our God is ruler awesome in power our God our God one more time our God is greater shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my Savior's love for me and I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned of me. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall end. in the garden for me it was in the garden he prayed not my will but mine he had no tears for his own but sweat drops of blood for mine how marvelous sin. He took my sin and my sorrows and made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. the voices. Here we go. How marvelous, how wonderful and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me.
should suffer Your very life to set me free The only thing that I can give you Is the life you gave to me This is my offering Dear Lord, this is my offering to you, God, and I will give you my life, for it's all I have to give, because you gave your life for me. is my offering to you, God, and I will give you my life, for it's all I have to give, because you gave your life for me. This is my This is my offering to you, God, and I will give you my life, for it's all I have to give, because you gave your life. This is my offering, dear Lord, this is my offering to you, God. sing that one more time. This is my offering. This is my offering, dear Lord. This is my offering to you, God. And I will give you my life, for it's all I have to give. Because you gave your life for me because you gave your life for me amen amen let's take a moment we're going to spend some time in prayer find somebody and let's let's find a partner and let's pray to our savior together
God was just saying to you, this is my offering. And I will give you my life for it's all I have to give because you gave your life for us. Lord, we pray that as we continue this service this morning, that your Holy Spirit speaks through Pastor James and that you open hearts and minds up to you, to your will, to your, to your word, and to your glory. And it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. While James is coming up, find somebody that you did not come with this morning, shake their hand, and tell them it's, you're, you're excited to see them in the house of the Lord this morning. And also, the kids are dismissed for downstairs. Okay, everybody, please grab your seat, make your way back. Man, I, I, that's my favorite part of the service is saying hello to people, and Lauren, Lauren didn't give me the chance. I had to say hello to him. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? It's good to see you. Yep. You psyched for fall? Nice trees and everything, the weather, right? Everything's good. Um, let's see, where should I start here? I st let me start with my name. My name is James Thomason. I'm the lead pastor here at Meeting House Church. And if this is your first time with us, and maybe I see a few first-timers, I would love the opportunity to say hello to you and get to, get to meet you. After the service, I'll be right back there in the corner over your right shoulder under the words Connection Center. Please stop by and say hello. Um, I promise I won't bite or do anything, do any weird pastor stuff to you, okay? Uh, um, number two, a um, couple of things that I want to really emphasize. Uh, this first one, I want you to mark this on your calendar, uh, please. November 27th through December 3rd, that week, uh, is we're going to do a week of prayer and fasting, and we're going to build up to that, okay? Um, that week, every night of the week, instead of having our normal activities, if you're aware of what goes on at Meeting House Church, there are, th there are Bible studies, prayer groups, AA groups, men's groups, women's groups, youth groups, something going on Monday through Thursday, every night of the week in this building and in our student center. Uh, as well as uh, people's homes throughout the week. So we are not just a Sunday-only church, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that. I, uh, that speaks to your love for the Lord and one another, the body of Christ. But that week, we're going we're gonna to ask everybody who's involved in that, and even if you're not, to come here uh, from 6.30 to 8 every, every night of the week, okay? And, of course, if you don't, you know, we realize not everybody, you know, things come up, anything. But we're going to do some worship, we're going to do some, some focused prayer, uh, we're gonna, it's going to be leading us somewhere, um, and, and let me just go on a little bit more, because I'm excited, let me, I'll say this as part of that, is for the last three years, I am more confident and certain that we are on the right track, the track, I mean, we started this church as a Bible study in our living room in 2006 with a handful of college students. And, uh, you know, I could go through the history of that, but uh, between then and now, out of this church has come five other churches. Uh, we planted five other, other churches out of this church. Um, we sent guys out to revitalize two others. Uh, we support missionaries. Um, many of you don't know that across the world. Um, God has b borne a lot of fruit here. Um, and, and so what my point is, is that God is, you know, a lot of you are coming up and telling me, man, I, I'm growing, you know, I really... 
I really, am, I really appreciate the church, the fellowship, the love within the body. Um, I'm growing from the Bible teaching, all this stuff. So God is producing fruit. There's people getting saved uh, on a regular basis. We have new people and new returning guests every Sunday. So God's at work here. He's, pro- he's, he's producing fruit, um, and, I, and we praise him for that. And we're going to keep going down this path. And uh, really, this week of prayer and fasting is, is it's, on, it's on the same path, okay? So uh, November 27th through December 3rd, that week. Then our ministry fair, okay? Summer's over, right? We're back, school's back, everything. And, of course, every summer, kind of, uh, our ministries kind of thin out, right? We all take vacations and everything. Well, we, we, we need you, right? One of our jobs One of our callings as the body of Christ is to serve one another, okay? Our ministries, those tables back there, are are set up with the different ministries in our church. There are different ways that you can serve uh, the people in this body of Christ and outside this body of Christ. So everybody, um, every one of us should be signed up and doing and participating in one of those ministries. And we're going to leave these up for another few weeks so make sure you go back there, um, learn. There's a, there, your, your, the ministry leader uh, should be there after the service. If not, there's an explanation sheet. There's a sign-up sheet. There's training for everything that we do, okay? So pray about it. Ask God, not if he wants you to do something, because he does. He, he calls us to serve one another, but what he wants us to do. Anything from, from tending the flowers outside to mowing the grass to uh, greeting people, you know, all the stuff that goes on, okay? Um, so that's, uh, that's that. Now let's move to, um, to today we're going to talk about, now I, I'm, I don't talk a lot about giving uh, here at Meeting House Church. Um, why don't I talk a lot about giving? Uh, I'm not sure why. The Bible tells us it's part of, of, of what we need to do as believers. It's, it's, it's one of the pieces of the pattern in, in, in pursuing Christ. We learn that. Um, today, uh, you know, I, I, don't wanna, I don't want you guys, I guess one of the reasons is I, want you, I don't want you guys to feel like I'm after your, your wallet, you know. Uh, I don't want that. I believe we should give out of a willing, loving uh, heart of gratitude to God, you know. And, and so today we're going to talk about giving. And uh, I am not going to manipulate you one bit, okay? I promise no tearful please, um, no, no promise that if you give money uh, you and go th- and then stop off at the, at the convenience store and buy a lottery ticket, you're going to win the lottery, I'm the, none of that stuff. So I've done everything in black and white, straightforward. Um, I, I, I respect your love for the Lord, your relationship with him. So I I entrust you and and your attitude towards giving uh, uh, to God and to his word, okay? So I'm going to be just straightforward. That's why I even brought this. That's why I'm sitting down today. Um, Just so we we would be very, I would would think, be chill, James. Be chill. Just uh, just present the truth. Um, I need that every now and then, okay? So we're going to, we're going to do, we're going to talk about three things really quick, okay? I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them. I'm going to present the truths about giving, okay? Um, and, and I'm going to share really some passages that have impacted me, okay? That, that have really motivated me out of God's word to give, okay? Um, so we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about the reasons we give. We're going to talk about the promises that God makes associated with our giving. And then we're going to talk about method. Our method of giving, okay? Those three things are all in the Bible, all right? Now, before we do that, um, but uh, I remember when I was a, a young uh, preacher boy, as they call them in the South, um, that's what, preacher boy, that's when you're going to school and learning to be a preacher, you're a preacher boy, uh, and, and I knew this one old black preacher, and uh, he wore nothing. He always wore black, sh- black suit, black tie, white shirt. All that's all he ever wore. Um, and uh, and and he said, he, he he said this. This is what a sermon is. Um, he said, James, you first thing you do is you tell them what you're gonna tell them. Then you tell them, 
then you tell them what you told them. That's, that's every, right? So I just told you what I'm going to tell you, okay? Reasons, promises, and method, okay? All right, now, um, d- does everybody have one of these? Does everybody get one of these? If you don't, raise your hand. We'll get it out to you real quick. I forgot to put my flyer in 14 point, so I have to use my reading glasses. So I I can't read 12 point anymore. Okay. Now, as 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 you know, uh, we had a uh, we had a financial meeting in September, um, just kind of an update, and uh, we did that because um, our uh, despite this, you know, our like I said, our church is 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 God is blessing spiritually. um, but our, 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 our relationship with God is connected to our material possessions. And uh, while God is producing a lot of fruit, and I think we're, we're growing and cooperating with his grace, in other words, we're growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord, we're pressing into him to grow. Um, at the same time, our, if, you know, if, if our spiritual growth looks like this, up in the chart is up and to the right, our, our financial giving is going down. And, and, and to the right. Um, and so I'm just going to talk quickly about this. I'm going to make you aware of the facts here, okay? And I, I gave you a trend here. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I want you to look at this, starting with the first bold heading, total undesignated giving by Middleborough campus, right? That's us. This church has two campuses right now, Middleborough and Mansfield. We started that back in uh, 2018, I think. Um, doing, they're doing well. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna set them free as an independent uh, church um, as soon as we can. But here's here's the last five years of our giving. Now, undesignated giving means money that we receive in the offering plate or online. That's just general giving. It's not hey, I want this to go to the building or this to missions or this to. Uh, help poor people, you know, people in need in the congregation. This is undesignated giving, and this is kind of a, a this is a, a nice thermometer, a, a consistent thermometer for us throughout the years. So in 2019, pre-pandemic, very important, things have changed in the church world the, the, uh, because of really the, the, the uh, imposition of, of things that governments did onto the church, and then uh, after lifting those, um, the the result has not, the church being people have not gotten back to, we haven't gotten back to our pre-pandemic, uh, um, I just call it faithfulness. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a national trend. It's a national trend, okay? No matter what the size of the church is, no matter what part of the country, okay? So 2019, that number was 243.8827. Everybody see that? Um, uh, in 2020, 249, 232. In 2021, now notice that's that's right after the pandemic. We had a, we had a great year, 273, 385. Now we had some some things that we were we were doing some physical plant, you know, improvements here uh, in the build that we needed to make. And, uh, and that, that, that jump is reflected there. Does everybody see that? So then when we budgeted uh, in 2022 and 2023, right, if you'll notice, we budget pretty, you know, we budget a small increase in giving eight, ten, eight to five to eight thousand dollars a year. And we have always met that at Meeting House Church, right? We started in, 20, in 2006. We've never had a year where we have gone down in giving since 2006, okay? Um, and I say 2021 is, a, is, a, uh, is an anomaly because, like I said, we had, we had some physical plant, some facilities giving that we had to focus on. Um, and you guys, obviously, we, get, we gave generously as a body. Of course, this is, you know, these are your chairs. This is your, your carpet, right? You, you, we, we paid for this. I didn't pay for it. The church didn't pay for it. You are the church. We did all this, okay? Um, 2022, we kind of came back down to earth, right? 
Now, 2023, you'll see we budgeted. That's right. So we, we do a financial assessment, and then we come up with an estimate. Hey, based on the trends from the last few years, what do we think in our growth trends or what do we think the congregation, you know, we're going to give? And so we, you see we upped it by $7,000 from 2022, from what we received in 2022 to what we expected to receive in 2023, okay? Now, n line number six is what we we are not we are on track to be eighteen thousand dollars below budget okay do you see that instead of 258 we're we're at 240 okay and and by the way we always kind of budget low and almost all we've we've I think every year in existence we've exceeded our our, our budgeted or projected giving so we don't we don't say hey man we're gonna go up the giving is going to go up $20,000 this year, and then we're going to focus a budget on that. We don't do that, okay? Um, and so uh, so usually we, we give an honest assessment, and then we usually exceed that, okay? Um, uh, uh, so that so what I want you to see, that number $240,591 is based on our 2023 year-to-date giving, okay? In other words, I've taken... January through September, because those are the years that we, those are the months that we have closed out. Totaled that up, divided that number by nine, okay, which comes out to be, if you look at 2023 giving breakdown, you see that line number seven, January through September, uh, 180,000 443 dollars and 68 cents, okay. That comes out to 20,049 dollars and 30 cents a month. Everybody seeing that? Now, last year, that number was $1,500 greater. It was $21,500 a month, okay? Now, here's where the concerning parts come with line 8 and 9. In September, we only gave 14, well, basically $15,000, okay? So that's a 20% decrease from our average monthly giving. Does everybody see that, Okay. So far in October, we've had three weeks of giving. Those three weeks, we have brought in $9,164. Um, now that's going to equal out to 12 and some change. So now we're down in October from 20% down to around 40% of our previously monthly giving. Everybody see that? So our giving has kind of fallen off a cliff um, in the last few months. Uh, now that's, that is counter... The normal trend is uh, that, that we expect every year. Every church follows this pattern. The lowest giving throughout the year in any church is summer, specifically right around July 4th. And then it starts to creep back up slowly, okay? But we, we haven't uh, recovered from that, all right? Um, so we're going down, all right? Does everybody see that? Now, I point that out because... Um, in other words, so number one, I don't want you to take this as a scolding. Like I said, this is informative, okay? Um, God's going to provide, okay? He always has and he always will. Uh, so I'm not worried, but we need to know this. Uh, you guys are adult followers of, of, of the Lord. This is your church, okay? Um, and and uh, so we make Meeting House Church what it is, right? We are the church. Um, our giving is the giving of the church, right? There's no entity outside of Meeting House Church that is financially or governmentally responsible for us, okay? We are responsible for ourselves before God, financially, spiritually, and in every, every other way, okay? Um, all right, so having laid that out, uh, um, let me just say this, and again, this is just the facts. If, 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 if these trends don't change, we're going to have to make some, some, some dramatic changes, okay, just so you know that. Uh, and uh, I don't want to make those changes. Um, so now, having laid that out, I'm going to lay out, uh, you see there, we're not going to go through all of those passages of Scripture, okay. But what I've done is I've, I've picked some different, some various passages of Scripture. You'll see it's not by far even close to all of that the Bible has to say about giving, but it is representative. You'll see that these come from Old and New Testament, okay? Um, 
And, and so now we're going to get on to our points. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each of these passages, okay? I'm just going to point out their truth and then move on, okay? Um, so we're going to talk about the reasons why we give, the promises that God makes to us as we give, and the method that God has laid out for us to give, okay? All right? Now, let's start with number one, the very first uh, appearance of the word tithe or tenth in the Bible is Genesis chapter 14. Um, can we hit that next slide? Are we good? Uh, we got that next slide? There we go. Thank you. Uh, is, is Genesis chapter 14. Now, basically, just so you, you know, you can, all these passages are here. I encourage you to go read them, study them, let God get, get these things into your mind and your heart, okay? Um, so this is, but I'll set this up. This is Abraham's return after defeating uh, some kings who had taken his nephew Lot and some of his people uh, captive, okay, after a battle. And, uh, and this is the first appearance of, of the word tithe in relationship to God, one of God's people uh, offering a tithe to God as worship, okay? And this is pre-law. There's not, right, we haven't reached Leviticus, Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. This is before all of that, okay? So it says, then Melchizedek, Melchizedek, uh, king of Salem. So Melchizedek was a believing king of Salem is Jerusalem, okay? Salem is, 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 would end up being Jerusalem. So way back then, there's a godly man who worships God most high and rules over Jerusalem. He says, then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God most high. He blessed, he blessed Abram, right? This is before God changed Abram's name to Abraham, saying, Blessed be Abram by God most high, creator of heaven and earth. And praise be to God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The, the, of the everything was the spoils of war that he had taken from the four kings, okay? Uh, or the five kings. It's five kings against four, and I, and I always get confused on how many bad guys there were. And how, Actually, there was only one good guy. The good guy was Abram, Abram and he, the, he fought with the, the other kings he fought with were not godly guys. Okay, they were, God, they were kings of Sodom and Gomorrah, as a matter of fact. Um, so Abram ties to Melchizedek as an offering, as an offering of gratitude and praise to God Most High. Okay, he offers a tenth. Now, this is all I'll say about the tithe or the tenth. Um, and, and I'm going to give you a little bit of our family. Uh, I do not believe that uh, Christians are, are mandated by the word of God to give a tenth of their income. Okay? I believe that's, that's for, but I, I believe that was for the nation of Israel. Okay? But I do believe that 10% is a biblical, uh, sincere guide that we should use. Okay? Our family... The Thomason family has given, we give 10% of our income every week, okay? And have since, well, I gave 10% before I met Christy and married her. We've given 10% through thick and thin, through up financial times, through down financial times. Um, now, sometimes we exceed that, we've exceeded that 10% by $500, $1,000. Sometimes we fall, we've fallen a little bit below it, okay? I, like I said, but our, we, we give 10%, okay? We don't, and we don't give because God commands it. Uh, that's not our primary reason. Our primary reason for giving is because we love and want to show gratitude and worship to God. That, that's the very first and main reason for giving. In my personal mind, I don't need another reason to give. I don't, I don't, I don't, God is, and we'll see this, my, my, my king, my creator, my provider, my judge, and my savior, he, is there, he has given me all that I have comes from his generous hand, 
all of my ability to earn what I have is a gift from his generous hand, then I will give back to him in love, gratitude, and worship. Okay? And I'm really not concerned about whether he's going to bless me or not. I'm going to do it whether, whether I profit financially or anything because it is what he deserves from me uh, financially. Uh, that's, my, that's my take on it. Okay? Um, so I'm not telling you you have to give 10%. I've told you this, uh, that we live on a 10-10-80 rule. Uh, we, our first thing is we give to God 10%. Our second thing is we save 10%, and then we live on the 80. Okay? And that's why I talked about giving from a kingdom-focused life. If you, right, you, have to, you have to have a, a kingdom-focused life to do that. Right? Uh, um, so that, enough said there. All right? Now. Uh, so there's a tithe, really, that, that's our, t- our testimony, my testimony. Um, I'm not putting that on you as a command, but I am saying you should open your heart up to those things. Though I've come to those conclusions, and these actions are family because of what God's Word says. And I can tell you that God does bless. Okay. Next thing, reasons for giving. Next slide, Deuteronomy chapter 16. This is one of the passages of Scripture that when I read it and meditated on it and and studied it, it made a huge impact on me, okay? Like, it's it's never left me. Um, If we go to another church, you know, we're on vacation, we go to another church, uh, we give to that church because of this verse, because of this passage of Scripture, okay? Um, Now, sometimes if I don't have money or, you know, oh, I forgot, we can't give, it's okay. But this is, where my, this is where our heart comes from on that. It says, God says to the, to, the, to the nation of Israel, Three times a year all your men must appear before the Lord your God at the place he will choose. At the festival of unleavened bread, the festival of weeks, and the festival of tabernacles. Here is the phrase that, that, that hit me and stuck with me. No one should appear before the Lord empty-handed. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord your God has blessed you. And so since I spent some time studying, meditating on that, I've, I've said, man, I, I want to I wanna participate in this. Right? I want you to understand this didn't come to me as a command. James, you better not appear before me empty-handed. It came before me as, God, you're my, you're my king. Every good and perfect gift I have comes down from you, the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of change. You have given me a strong mind, body, um, to to provide for myself and my family. You've given me health. Uh, You have given me jobs to work so that I can earn. I have never gone a day in my life when I was a child uh, or as an adult uh, without food in the refrigerator, without clothes on my back, without a roof over my head, without a bed to sleep in. Um, and, and, And all these blessings... Even my efforts and, and, the, and the fruit that have come from my efforts uh, are from you. And, and so I, I want to, I, I don't want, I want to, I want to, every time I appear before you in worship, God, I want to give you, a, 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 I want to show you gratitude. That's my, that's, that's my take, okay? Enough said on that one. Let's move on. First Chronicles. This is another big, impactful one. Like I said, these are some that, that I'm sharing from my heart here, okay? These are the things, these are, many of these are the scriptures that really grabbed me, okay? First Chronicles chapter 29, a little bit of background. This is David. Uh, he wanted to build a temple for the Lord, okay? They've, they've had just a tabernacle up to this point. He wanted to build a temple for the Lord. God said, nope, um, I know you love me. You're a man after my own heart, but your hands are stained with the blood of war, um, your son Solomon will build the temple for me. And so David decides to call the people, the, 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 the people to give, to, 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 to prepare, uh, to give money and supplies to build the temple so that when Solomon became king, the, the supplies would be there. Okay, so the nation is given an offering to build um, uh, the temple. And here is David's response. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Wealth and honor come from you. You see, what I said about our, my, right, 
my ability to provide for my family, that everything, right? King David, a man after God's own heart, acknowledged this same thing. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength. Okay? So, and this is true for for you as well as me. Um, Any strength that I have is a gift from the Lord. Whether it be intellectual strength, psychological strength, spiritual strength, physical strength, it is all a gift from the Lord. And, and, I, and God moved on my heart long ago to say, uh, God, I will not use the strength that you have blessed me with only for my own profit. I will use it to help to serve you and to help those in need, those who, who don't have strength at this time, okay? And I believe that's a a right down the middle into the bullseye heart uh, of 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 the way God wants us to be. Um, uh, um, And and so uh, verse 13, Now our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. Now catch verse 14. This 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 is the verse of incredible impact. But who am I and who are my people? that we should be able to give as generously as this. Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. Wow. What an incredibly different perspective that King David, the man after God's own heart, had toward giving when compared with the normal American Christian's attitude towards giving, and certainly our cultures. David's attitude was God was not, how little can I give? How, how much can I get away with just giving? His attitude was, my God, it is a privilege that I even get to honor you with my wealth. And all that you have given me comes from you. And so I'm only giving back to you a portion of what you have given me. And this is, right, this is the Christian concept. This is the biblical, this is an accurate worldview of reality. Okay? All that you and I have, all that we enjoy, has been given to us by our Heavenly Father. It is all His gift. Every breath we take, every beat of our heart, is a generous, gracious gift from God. And all that we give back to Him is only returning part of Him, part to what He is, to what we've received from Him. Okay? Uh, it's like, our, you know, a lot of people... Let me just make a parallel, right? Um, And we'll see this. Uh, Hasn't always been this way, but right now, um, I am able to, uh, you, provide my salary, okay? This body of Christ gives, and my salary comes out of what you you give, right? So you give me all of my income. That wasn't the case for many years, for, for the majority of the years of Meeting House Church. I worked two, three, ti- three jobs many times, but, uh, and, and, uh, and, and my wife, and uh, we have some part-time employees. Now, I take that and I give back one-tenth of that to this body of Christ. So I, I only, I receive, all that I receive comes from you, and then I give it, and I give a portion of that back to you. As, as the body of Christ. This is what David is saying his attitude towards God and his giving was in relationship to God. Does everybody track that parallel? Okay. All right. Um, so why do we give to God? What are the reasons? Love for God. Gratitude and worship. Those are, I, I can't give you three greater reasons to give to God and his work in this world than that. Now, The next passage, Haggai, chapter 1. And this one, man, this one hit me like a bolt of lightning. 
Like, this is one of those passages that you read, and it scared me. <laughs> right? You ever read a passage in the Bible and got like, whoa. You ever got scared by a passage in the Bible? No? Like, is that a, <laughs> like this one was like, whew, man, I, James, you better listen up right here. Okay? Now, I'm going to set this one up. Uh, maybe before I do, let me just give a caveat. Okay? We do not have a temple in now. This building is not the temple of the Lord. You'll never hear me refer to this, uh, uh, to this space as a sanctuary. Um, you'll never hear me refer to this church as a temple or a sanctuary. The reason is, is because now we are the temple, the sanctuary. The Holy Spirit lives in us, right? Okay? In the old, under the, under the first covenant, the old covenant, that God wanted, God, well, he didn't, re, it, there's kind of an interplay there. Uh, God kind of gave in to the people to build him a, a tabernacle, a location, okay? And, and it's kind of a, I would, I would say it's kind of a give and take between God's people. Because God says, what kind of house are you going to build me, right? Heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Were you going to build me some kind of house for me to dwell in, right? But he did build a temple, and he instituted, and he and he instituted the tabernacle and the temple worship and all and everything. Um, so, so I don't don't mistake me for equating this with the temple. Okay, uh, what I'm making is a practical application here. Okay, really to God's work and to the facilities that we because we have chosen in America uh, to to have facilities for churches to meet in. Um, uh, now, that doesn't mean we can't do house church and all that stuff. Uh, not opposed to that at all. Okay, but Haggai, let me set up Haggai. Haggai is after the uh, Babylonian captivity, right? Now, I don't know how much you know, so I'm just going to keep it really short. God, God, the, God created the nation of Israel. They, they, uh, he gave them possession of, of, of the modern-day uh, plot that is Israel now, that nation plus more. Um, and uh, and he set kings over him, Saul, first king, uh, second king, and greatest king, David, that all others were patterned after, then his son Solomon. Then uh, there's a, a, a civil war. The, the nation breaks into two pieces. Um, wouldn't you know it, north and south, um, kind of just like our country. North was called Israel. Uh, south was called Judah, okay? Um, is, uh, Israel existed for another 200 years in total disobedience to God. Uh, God brought the Assyrians on them. Um, they were ta that wiped out, taken captive. Um, another, uh, the, the southern uh, tribe or kingdom, Judah, plus the little tribe of Benjamin, lasted for about 340 years. Some godly kings in there, mostly ungodly. Uh, in other words, they continue to worship false gods. God finally brought the Babylonians in judgment on them, Nebuchadnezzar. Um, he took them, most of the population captive captive back to Babylon for 70 years, okay? Destroyed the temple in Jerusalem, all right? Uh, then after 70 years, they come back, and, and uh, there's a command issued to return and rebuild Jerusalem uh, and to rebuild the temple, okay? So this is about the return to the, the command and the rebuilding of the temple, okay? So some of God's people are back in the land now. Um, they're beginning to prosper in the land, okay? Haggai says this um, in chapter 1, uh, verse 2. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people, returning, referring to those who had been back in the land, right? They're building their houses. They've already been given the command to rebuild the temple, okay, by God. He says, these people say, the time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. Right? So there, they've received the word of the Lord. Haggai has, has given it to Zerubbabel, the prophet has spoken what God spoke to him to Zerubbabel, but the people's response is, no, we're, we're not ready to rebuild the temple yet. We're not ready to do that. Um, and what we're going to see is they were focused on their own houses and livelihoods. They, no, we're, we're, we want to keep building our, our house and our kingdoms first before we focus. It's not yet time to rebuild the Lord's house. Um, and... Uh, then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Verse 4. 
is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains in ruin? In other words, the Lord's house, right? So you get the picture. The people are back in the land. God has begun to bless them. They're prospering financially. You know, now they don't just have dwellings. Now they're paneling them. You know, they're, they're nice, right? They're, they're starting to, to change their Formica kitchen uh, countertops to granite kitchen countertops, you know. Uh, they're changing their, their vinyl siding now to uh, um, cedar siding. You know, they're, everything's, they're, everything's, they're upgrading, okay. But the house of God is not progressing according to, it's, it, it, they're neglecting the work of God and the worship of God. And so God says in verse 9, you expected much. Now listen, I'm, not, I'm saying those things. I hope you understand. You take those. There's nothing wrong with having ca- granite countertops, okay? I, 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 right? Don't, if you've got granite countertops, don't go home going, Pastor James, my kid, I'm telling you, nah. <laughs> you know, don't, don't, don't make that mistake, okay? Um, all right? You, now look at what he says, though. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why? Declares the Lord God Almighty. Because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with your own house. Okay? So what I realized here, what, the, the, what I came out of this, and, and it's, it's been, what Christy and I came out of this, is this. We will never prioritize our own kingdom above God's kingdom and work. I will never, pri- we, will, we will never take, right, uh, we'll, we'll never do it. Um, and this was a big thing on our hearts when we began Meeting House Church. You know, we bought a house, it was a fixture-upper, a lot of stuff needed fixing. You know, and we said, well, that's just going to have to wait. We're going to focus on God, His kingdom, and His work first. And then as He prospers that and we have time, then we'll, then we'll fix up our place. But, but we're going to focus on the Lord and His work and His place first. And so what we came out of that was with, not that, not, not that we're going to starve ourselves, you know, we're not going to starve our kids, you know, that, not that, I don't believe God would be into that. Well, it, plus, He never let us get there. You know, I've told you goofy stories about Him providing, you know, sales on, on new basketball shoes for basketball season. I've told you all those goofy stories. Um, praying for our old, uh, you know, big giant van, uh, driving in the rain, um, and, and the window wipe, the windshield wiper stopped working. Um, we bought this big giant, uh, what are those things, conversion vans uh, from Christy's dad because, uh, well, we could fit the whole family in and drive back and forth to Missouri. Um, God did some amazing miracles with that van, man. I could go, I could go on. Like, uh, um, and Ethan, it ended up being Ethan's high school ride. And he's like, man, Dad, I want to, I said, look, believe me, once you get to school in this thing, everybody's going to, you're going to be the dude that everybody wants to, and sure enough, man, let's take the big van, let's pile in Ethan's van, you know, it was everything. Uh, but we're going down the road, and it like starts pouring down rain, and, and we're, we're kind of poor at this point. It's the early days of Meeting House Church, and the windshield wipers just, I mean, it was like one of those rains like you can't, you can't see through, you know. They stopped working. We were on the highway. We had to pull up the side of the highway. <laughs> that wouldn't work, you know. So, okay, kids, we're all going to pray and ask God to make the windshield wipers work, right? So we pray. <laughs> Never took it to get them fixed, man. I'm like, these, ba- I am not, go- I'm not double I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna doubt the Lord. We are never taking this thing to get him. I tell you another thing. I, I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't mean this stuff, but it's incredible. So we're riding that big thing all the way to Missouri, right? We made a triangle from here to Missouri to North Carolina and back up every summer for a year. Boom, boom, boom. Or sometimes it went this way. Boom, 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 boom. Like that. I mean, and, you know. So it was. It was great. Um, it was beat up. You know. It looked like. You know, if we'd have got pulled over, maybe a cop would have thought we abducted like four kids or something like that. You know what I mean? Because it was that kind of looking thing. Um, but we're in West Virginia, man, hills of West Virginia. You know that things, and uh, and the transmission gave out. I mean, it died. Like it was, uh, I, I can't. Remember, it was like uh, I don't even know how we managed to, but it was. It was, 
I can't even remember the whole story, but it was, uh, you know, you pu- I'd push the gas and just, bzzz, you know, uh, it, nothing was, no teeth were gripping and everything. We stopped at this, at this place, you know, in, in West Virginia, and the guy's like, well, you know, this is what it's going to take, how long it's going to take, you know. And I'm like, well, uh, so we prayed, and like, we don't have that much money, you know, we're on the road to Missouri. And, and we prayed and got in that thing and, and, and somehow got it and drove it from West Virginia to Missouri with a, with a busted transmission. It made it all the way there. Uh, it was a miracle. I mean, like, the guy's like, look, you're crazy. You're going to go drive this thing. I'm telling you, there's no way it's going to make it. The guy's like, I'm like, dude, we don't have the money. Like, I'm sorry. We're just going to have to trust God, you know. And this mechanic, you know, and, of course, the mechanic, he's like, I know how a transmission works. This is impossible. Well, you know, uh, so so um, we made this determination, God. Where I'm not gonna I'm not gonna build my kingdom before I build yours. Okay, I'm not gonna part. Not no. You know, there's gonna be times. You know when, but but I'm not gonna sit here and uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna trust you uh, because your kingdom work is greater than than whether my house is finished. Your kingdom work is greater than what are the what kind of car I can drive. Um, you're, 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 what you're doing and what we're doing and what you're doing through us is just worth more than that. We're fine, okay? So that's, that, you know, and it kind of scared me because, like, I was, I was feeling that, man, we just bought this house and, gosh, this, you know, we got this to fix up and this to fix up. And, and I'm like, man, I can't, get, I can't get caught up on that, okay? Because what God said was now they're starting to work. And, 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 st- and now their labor begins to produce no fruit. It's kind of like they keep pr- putting fruit in the, bu- in the basket, but the basket doesn't get more full. And God was, God was trying to get to their attention. Listen, the reason why you're not a- able to accumulate wealth and goods right now is because you're neglecting me. I put a hole in the bottom of your bucket, and so when you fill it, some, it's falling out. And this is why, okay? Um, promises, next. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 8, and one method point here. Um, I recommend you read all of, and it's on the sheet, all of 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9. Um, let's begin in verse 6. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Okay, sowing, he's talking about, this is about financial giving, you'll see. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. So here's one word on method, generously, right? God, uh, we should want to give, there, we should, understanding who God is and his, dis, his love for us and the, and, and the guarantee of his provision and care, we should want to give to God generously, Okay. And then he's going he's gonna to bless us and we'll reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, right? That's why I said I don't believe a, a rigid 10% law uh, for New Testament givers. We should decide what to give uh, in your heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. That's why I'm not up here trying to draw tears out of your eyes. That's why I'm not trying to hype up, you know. I hate it. When I see preachers hype stuff up, I hate it when they try to give tear jerking and, and, and go beyond God's promises. I mean, there's a lot of preachers that use statements on giving from God's word that don't apply to, to the New Testament church, okay? Um, but give generously, okay? Uh, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. God loves a cheerful giver, okay? When we give, when we give from the heart, when we give generously and with this heart of gratitude, God loves it. He rejoices in it. He looks at you and says, well done, my child. Okay? Um, Eight, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work, okay? So God says, method, give generously, promises. When you, when you give with this heart towards me, God, look, if giving is, is just you kind of paying your tax to God, 
you know, if, if that's what it is to us, and I'm not accusing you of that, but if, if that's kind of, yeah, I just guess I got to give, you know, I got to pay tax to the government, I got to pay tax to God, then you don't, that's, God doesn't want it, keep it. And he's not going to bless you for that, okay? Um, but he, God promises right here in many other places financial and spiritual blessing, okay? So I just want to put this thought into your head. I'm not saying it's the reason. There's difficult times, difficult financial times come to us in all circumstances. When we're walking faithfully with the Lord and, and serving Him and giving generously, and when we're not walking faithfully and serving or giving generously, right? God, bring, God allows hardship in, for different reasons in both of those situations. One would be disciplinary. The other one would be to, to, to strengthen our character okay, to make us more like Christ, but um, a lot of times our reasoning goes like this, man, times are tight, I barely have enough, I can't do, um, right, and so I, I can't give, and so this is just a thought, it's, I'm not, it's not a, I'm not saying this is a cause, but we ought to think, hmm, could it be that I'll use that terminology. My bucket has a hole in it uh, because I am. My heart is wrong towards God in giving. In other words, I. The, is it possible that my financial hardship is God trying to get my attention to His generous blessing on me and and so that I will, I will give generously as an act of love, gratitude, and worship to him. And then if I changed and gave in my situation of need, that he would then bless. Does everybody, did I explain that? Well, you, you tracking that? I'm not saying that's always the cause. I'm not saying it's your cause right now. I'm saying it is a biblical possibility. Okay, that's what I'm saying. All right? All right? All uh, right. Reason, uh, next one, um, uh, First Timothy chapter 5. The elders who direct the affairs of the church well, um, elders is a, fra- is a word for pastors. Pastors in the New Testament are referred to with three different words, elder, pastor, and overseer or bishop. They're all the same office. They just refer to different functions, okay, within the office, okay? Um, a pastor, you can have lay pastors up here um, in culturally in the north. Uh, um, we, I've discovered that the pastor is, 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 uh, is like, the, like my position, and then there's elders who are lay elders, okay? In, in the south, um, it's pretty much pastors. Uh, those, rule, those distinctions are not biblical, okay? Um, an elder, someone who's called an elder up here is, is also a pastor and an overseer, okay? I am an elder, pastor, and overseer. Lauren is an elder, pastor, overseer. Bobby's an elder, pastor, overseer, um, that, that, that kind of thing. Uh, and elders, pastors, and overseers can all be paid or not paid, okay? They can be um, lay, meaning unpaid or paid by the church, all right? Um, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. The elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. For Scripture says, Do not muzzle the ox or an ox while it is treading out the grain, and the worker deserves his wages. Okay? Right? So that's obviously speaking of church paying its elders and pastors, right? Now, Maybe you could take issue with the first verse there. It says the elders who direct the affairs, uh, who direct the affairs of the church well, are worthy of double honor. And you might say, "Well, James, you really don't direct the affairs of the church well." So you know, I'm not. It's you know, okay. I, that's a, that's a legitimate legitimate thing. That's tongue in cheek, right? You guys get the joke there. Okay. Um, not very good at preaching and teaching. Okay. All right. I guess. Uh, just joking, just joking, everybody's good. All right, so pay our, paying your pastors, elders, and overseers, okay? That's why we give. Um, the second reason, and I'm not going to cover this, you can read it in 2 Kings and other places, is for upkeep of facilities, okay? 
It's right. Somebody, some, we got to pay the electric bill, the heat bill, the gas bill, right? When something breaks, we need to, we need to fix it. Okay. We just had our, our AC break. You know, we had to bring a uh, HVAC guy in, fix it. Okay. Those kinds of things. All right. Finally, method and we'll be done. Uh, really straightforward. Just going to bullet point this. First Corinthians chapter 16, verses one and two. Now about the collection for the Lord's people. Do what I told the Galatian churches to do. Now notice, so this is not simply for the Corinthian church, right? This is the churches of Galatia. So we can normalize this, okay? Now this is about giving for the work of the ministry, in particular for the relief of, of the poor, of poor Christians in Jerusalem, because there were financially hard times in Jerusalem right now, okay? He says this, number two, verse two. On the first day of every week, okay, that's today, right? It seems that, right, we said the New Testament, we talked about God's day in the pieces of the pattern for pursuing Christ. It seems that there was an early shift from Saturday as the Sabbath to the Lord's day, Sunday, the day that Jesus rose from the grave as the celebration of the Sabbath for the church. Now, it's, you know, it's okay if, if Christians worship on on, on Saturday. It's okay if Christians worship on Sunday. It's okay if Christians wor- worship on both. Okay, that's my take on this. All right, but on the first day of every week, each one of you, right? So giving is to be done on the Lord's Day, on Sunday. Um, now we do, you know, online and stuff because people pay bills online and stuff like that. So there, each one of you, right? Everyone should give. You should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, right? So here we're talking budgeted, proportional giving. In keeping with your income, set it aside. Saving it up, right? So we're talking this is planned. This is not haphazard. It's not, oh, no, it's Sunday morning. Um, wait, did we have, do we have anything in the change bowl? You know what I'm saying? Uh, do I have a buck in my pocket? Um, it's, it's regular. It's planned. It's budgeted. It's saved up, right? Now, this last phrase, so that when I come, no collections will have to be made, okay? I've said this a number of times. If any church, any body of believers would give as God biblically calls us to give, any meeting house church, any church, this is true. We would never have to make special offerings. We'd never have to say, hey, guys, you know, we're, we, we, something broke, we, we got to, rarely, might be a big disaster. We'd, have, we'd never have to say, hey guys, um, listen, the roof needs repair. We got to take up, you know, we got to have a, we're going to, for the next two months, we're going to ask you to give a little more than you normally did. We would never have to make special collections if, if all of us, as a, as a body of Christ, because of our, first of all, for our love, gratitude, and worship for God, then because of the furtherance of his work in the world, right, uh, that's the second reason, right? The furtherance of his work in the world, first is wor- first to God, second for his work in the world, third to pay pastors, um, fourth to upkeep of the facilities, okay? Those are the, those are the four reasons. Um, if, we, if we gave as God says, we would never, I'd never ever need to stand up here and say, hey guys, we're, we're you know, this is what we need. This is, this is, right, no collections have to be made. So let me end that one more time, method. We learned, we learned generously, we learned proportionately, right? So first day of the week, or we could say consistently, every, uh, everyone, um, all of us, every believer, this is for every believer, set aside a sum of money, saving it up, right? Planned, budgeted, proportional, in keeping with your income so that no collections are necessary, okay? All right, we are done, we are done. Right. You guys get through it okay? All right, let's pray. Father God, we love you and thank you. Um, we do praise you, God, for you are God, our provider. Psalm 145, God, you open your hand and you satisfy the needs of every living thing. God, we like, say, we like David say, God, we acknowledge all that we have 
physically, intellectually, spiritually, um, uh, psychologically. All that we have, our ability to have a job and earn money is, to, is from you. The ability, there's people on this planet who, who they, they cannot, they don't have the opportunity for work. They cannot, even, even though they have the ability, they can't provide for themselves except for foraging or something like that or digging through trash. God, you have blessed us. We are in the 1% of the world. All that we have and all the fruit that comes from our labor is a blessing from you. Lord, and, and we, we worship you. We thank you. We praise you for all that you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall church. Have a great week. We'll see you right back here next Sunday.